an entrepreneur is no longer a choice. Today I want to talk about education, and I want to talk about how we can prepare today's youth to successfully navigate in this under, uncertain future that we know nothing about, and be ready to take jobs that don't yet exist. Because we are today talking about the future and talking about a lot of great things that might happen. But reality is that we don't really have a clue, do we? I mean, let's be honest. We have no idea what's coming at us because human beings are inherently bad at envisioning the future. Because we think in a kind of a linear way, and that's not how it works anymore. So when we think about the future, we try to kind of project the past. But in a time where we have exponential technological advancements that leads to radical societal change, this doesn't work anymore. In the next 20 years, humanity will change more than in the previous 300 years. So there's absolutely no way that we can predict even the next two decades ahead of us. And I can see that many of you are thinking, yeah, well, I like technology. I like the future, right? And I do too. I'm excited about technology and all these advancements. I'm excited about exoskeletons and advanced robotics that are going to take over phys hard physical labor. I'm excited about drones, biomedicine that will cure a lot of future diseases. And I'm excited about driverless cars. I'm super excited about driverless cars, right? That's how it's, it's going to fundamentally change our urban landscapes as we know it. No longer do we need to allocate prime real estate to these ugly, huge parking lots. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no longer are we going to have to uh, deal with all these traffic accidents. Hopefully, that's going to be reduced quite massively. And we're going to have much cleaner air in our cities. So I'm super excited about all these things, and it's going to be epic. What I'm not so excited about are these inevitable consequences that comes when we get rid of 90% of the cars that we have on the roads today. And I'm not just talking about the 14 million commercial drivers that we have in the US today. 14 million, that's a lot of people. I'm also talking about DMV personnel, because you no longer need a driver license, do you? Are right, you going to miss those visits at the DMV? <laughs> Rechecking on your vehicle registration, all that stuff. It's going to be a changed world, and you'll have to get used to it. But what about insurance agents? What about police officers? What about car manufacturers and auto mechanics? All of those people might be out of a job, and they will have to rethink everything about themselves. They will have to redefine themselves and find new career opportunities. They will have to be a lot more entrepreneurial than they are today in order to not become obsolete. And I think many of you are still kind of leaning back in your seats and say, yeah, good thing I'm not in the transport business, Henrik. <laughs> right? Because in here, we're all part of the intellectual elite. We're all critical thinkers, we're super creative, and there's no way that these supercomputers are going to come after us, because we're brilliant. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I'm not sure if I know any doctors that want to compete against a robot, see through tissue, it never gets tired, it never gets stressed, it can always conduct the same kind of procedure with ultimate perfection. It has access to infinite amounts of patient information about all previous procedures done in this way. That's going to be a tough competition. What about lawyers? You now have a supercomputer, some kind of quantum computer combined with machine learning or artificial intelligence, as we call it, that have access to all previous cases and has the statistical programs to be able to process all that information at once and come up with some pretty good arguments. What about all you business executives? I can see all of you out here. You know your business pretty well, right? You know your own market. Well, now you're up against a computer that know all markets around the world, and they will also be come up with some pretty good managerial decisions. So all of us around the world are need to realize that we're going through massive societal transformations at a pace that we simply cannot grasp as human beings. And we all need to be a lot more entrepreneurial in order to not become obsolete. We need to redefine ourselves to still stay relevant in this new changed world. But enough about you and me. What I really want to talk about is today's youth. And when we think about going through these big societal changes, it's hard not to think about Darwin and how he said that in the long history of humankind, those who are able to collaborate and improvise most effectively prevailed. So what Darwin talks about here is, of course, the skills of the surviving species, right, including humans. So we must do something, right? 
But there are also, those are also the exact traits of entrepreneurs, if you think about it. That's what we have to do every single day running our businesses. We need to be able to adapt to these constant changes that the world throws at us, right? New competitors that come up with better and cheaper products, the market demand changes, and we need to come up with new value for our customers, or employees that leave our business, and we're stuck with fewer resources, and we have to deal with that. Those are not easy things to come around, but those are going to be skills that will be even more important in a future that's changing faster and faster and faster. So we could ask ourselves, are we doing a good enough job at preparing today's youth with these types of skills? And I think the answer is no. I think we're still stuck in this illusion that as long as you get a degree from some kind of decent school, you will have this insurance policy and you will always be needed. Because there are always employers out there who will need young graduates with skills and degrees. Am I right? <laughs> But we'll see. Well, it used to be that way, right? It used to be that you would go to school to acquire a set of skills that you would then be able to utilize throughout your entire career. Right? My mom, for example, I've got to be careful here a little bit, but my mom worked as an administrator and a secretary throughout her career. And one of the really useful courses she took, she has many skills, but one of the courses she took was when she learned how to be an accurate and fast typewriter. Okay, and this skill served her really well throughout her entire career, working in various positions at different companies. Now, in 2016, we have so much technology. We have voice to text, and we have that in our apps, right? We have really good word processors, and we have fast spell check. So the skill as a typewriter, although still relevant, might be less important. But that's okay, though. She's at the end of her career. She's about to retire. Not a big deal. Then let's take one generation later. Let's take me. I find that many, if not most, of the skills that I learned as an engineering student less than 10 years ago are already obsolete. That if I were to go and try to find a job based on the skills I learned in school less than 10 years ago, I would have a really hard time because everything has changed. The types of employees the industry needs, the types of skills, the types of programs they use, all of that has changed and I know nothing about it if I were to take a job based on those skills I learned. So where it used to take the time span of an entire professional career, it now takes less than a decade for those skills to be obsolete. And if we look at today's students, at this rapid societal change, it's not going to slow down, it's going to accelerate further. So many, if not most, of the skills they learn in school today are going to be obsolete the day they graduate. That's going to be a big challenge. So basically, we will have an entire generation many multiple generations that are graduating with degrees that fit job descriptions that no longer exist. So where this didn't, didn't work anymore, and one of the other frustrations I have with the education system today is that we don't focus on what you can do with your skills. Today we live in a world where information about anything can be found anywhere at any time. So what matters is no longer what you know, but rather what you can do with what you know. And I don't think we're very good at teaching that. I think we're still stuck in this education system that has these subject-specific silos, where you go to your math class to learn math, you go to physics to learn physics, and then language and history and all the other things. And if you have a great teacher, maybe they will occasionally let you utilize a little bit of that theory on a project that you care about, right? But that's the exception, not the rule. So we have this problem that you're not actually utilizing the skills you learn. And I think that should be the essence of education, teaching students what they can do with what they learn. Then they would also be a lot more motivated to learn new advanced skills, because they can see there's a meaning with it. It's not just to pass some standardized test and pass an exam and then forget about it. It's actually because they can apply it on a project they truly care about. The good news is that there is a solution to this. It's called entrepreneurship education. It's not rocket science, it's project-based learning where we allow the students to build projects they really care about, to find a problem they want to solve, and then apply the skills they're learning in other subjects on that project. But my frustration is that we're still not teaching entrepreneurship in mainstream schools. So about five years ago, I set out on this journey to change that. I wanted to bring entrepreneurship education to the masses. So I sat down with a group of experienced entrepreneurs from around the world, and we looked at what are the necessary skills you need to understand? What are the skills you need to acquire in order to be a good first-time entrepreneur? And this is not just if you want to start your own business. It's if you want to be entrepreneurial in order to successfully navigate in a future that changes all the time. 
And we found that the first thing you need to really understand is having an entrepreneurial mindset. Being able to look at a problem and see that as an opportunity. Instead of seeing barriers, you see opportunities. You see a way to improve the world for the better. So that's number one. And then we basically went on to look at, well, then you also need to have a specific toolbox on how to transform those problems into real opportunities. To work as a team, to come up with good ideas, how to apply technology, to go and test those ideas with real potential customers, to build a prototype and eventually pitch. So there are many aspects of being an entrepreneur, but all of them are important. So after we kind of put this together, we uh, decided to travel the world. We've been to now more than 20 countries across all six continents, had a pleasure to work with people in all different conditions, from different societal levels and many different cultures. And I can tell you, there's something magic about entrepreneurship. It applies, it works everywhere. Last year, I had the chance to go and work with some uneducated mushroom farmers from the mountains in Papua New Guinea, and they loved it. I worked with young unemployed women in Jordan that wanted to make a difference in their local community. They loved it. And we worked with Ivy League students here in the US who finally find a way to channel all that energy, all that, those skills into something that makes sense. So it's a question to me, it's a mystery to me why we don't do that more. And of course, we also ran into some barriers when we tried to work with high schools and colleges and universities. And many of the educators and, and administrators are a little hesitant, right? Because this entrepreneurship stuff doesn't fit into any of the boxes. It, it doesn't work because it's super multidisciplinary. We're trying to do everything in a collaborative way, and it's harder to measure. We don't have a standardized test for how entrepreneurial you become after this course. There are ways around it, but it's not as easy. However, every time they agree to let us try it out, or we train their teachers and we give away our curriculum, right, so they can spread it, they come back to us and say, this is just incredible. We have all these students that are now way more motivated than before. The high performers are performing even better, and the students that are used to be kind of academically challenged are now rising up and changing behavior completely, because they have a project that they care about. They can see the meaning on why they need to learn these important skills. And it's not just in the entrepreneurship class, it's also in all the other classes, that now they are eager to learn so they can succeed with their projects. So my hope is that in the future, we're fundamentally going to change the way we run education. Everything should be based around large projects that the students identify and that the students care about. And then they will necessarily, automatically learn the necessary skills in order to be successful with those projects. But I know that's going to take some time. So my wish today is simply that we start looking at entrepreneurship education and give it the same priority as all other subjects in school. Because in the future, being an entrepreneur is no longer a choice. And we, as educators and parents, have the obligation to do everything we can to prepare our young people for this uncertain future so they are able to be adaptable and change the future and create happy lives for themselves. Thank you. Thank you.